last episode we set up our zombies so they have their animation and all the nav mesh and stuff like that ready to go and obviously they can idle <clears throat> things like that now we want to get them just sort of moving around the area um, very simple stuff um, but as I've said this before we're not going to be doing anything complicated like a blackboard that's I'm going to reserve that for setting up um, sort of real people AIs you know the more complicated stuff where they have to make decisions you know and things like that this this sort of stuff they don't really need to make decisions uh, in a very complex way so we just need them to sort of walk around uh, if they see the player attack you know things like that uh, you may even want to add like a eat from body animation or something like that you know uh, and we want them to fall over when we shoot and things like that so to start off let's get them at least moving around the map in today's episode uh, and to do that we're going to need to open up our master BP let's uh, open up full blueprint okay so for this we're only going to need um, our event begin play um, and we'll want probably a couple of custom uh, events uh, we'll call this one um, uh, decide next action and we'll call the next one um, we'll call it uh, random roam so the reason for the decision the side next move is uh, we want basically to um, we basically want to add any extra stuff that we want onto here so things like uh, should they eat bodies for example like um, or if I was doing animals I would add in like should sleep should run away should um, eat should drink you know things like that and we would give them like thirst and stuff to drive their decisions in around all that stuff but for today we just need um, all this stuff now on event begin play we just want to call our random roam um, code because whenever they start we want to get them moving around the map <clears throat> the next thing we want to do is we would want to uh, we want to get a delay delay like so and we want to get a random number within that so let's get random integer in range and we'll have that convert into a float and we want it to be somewhere between now we don't want it to move immediately so I would say one to five or two to six seconds is good enough. But play around with that figure. It will pick somewhere within that uh, to add into this delay to then do what we want to do next. And today all we want it to do is a random run. Later on down the line, you could set up booleans to see if the, um, the zombie's been attacked. Has been, is, he, is he hungry? Is he tired? Um, is he just need to roam again you know all those things then allow you to kind of make something a, a little bit more um, fleshed out than sort of your normal AI but um, zombies aren't really the most difficult things and that's probably all about the, any animal or um, zombie or anything like that would ever kind of think about is do I need to eat do I need to attack? Do I need to run? Do I need to drink? Do I need to sleep? And do I just need to move around? Right? It's like about six things they need to really think through in order to get them moving as they probably would in the real life, in the real world. Um, whereas when you've got people or humanoid characters, they need to decide a lot more. Do I need to go to work? Do I need to shoot? Do I need to 
uh, patrol this area? Do I need to um, go shop? You know, there's loads of different things that you, depending on the game you're making, they would have to think through. Anyway, let's uh, move on for a second. We want to get their character movement. Now our zombies are set up to 150 uh, for the moment. So we want to set max walk speed to um, 150. If I can click on it. Jesus, what's happening? There we go. 150. Plug that in to the set. Like so. So it should look just a little bit like that. Uh, and then we want the uh, AI to move to something. So uh, AI move to, it's that one there. Now the pawn is the self, okay? Uh, get a reference to self. The reason it's the self is because it's just moving itself. It's not worrying about anyone else uh, within the area. Once that's happened, we just need to get our current actor's location. So get actor location. Uh, and then we just need to get a random reachable point in uh, uh, radius. So get random point in. Um, now you could say get random point in navigable radius. But I'm going to get a get random reachable point in radius. That way it's not going to do any crazy... Um, Maneuvers through the world. It's just going to go directly where I, like where it can go. So uh, this goes back to kind of that whole um, sort of idea of um, having. Uh, I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say. It, it, it comes back to the whole idea of you know whether something can sort of get to a point. So I was saying about the other day, Daisy zombies wouldn't go up the stairs. That's because they didn't have a nav mesh bounds. Doesn't mean they didn't have a nav mesh bounds, not on the stairs, but on the second floor. So imagine zombies just pinged to the second floor. That would be way more terrifying and people would just be still on stairs waiting for zombies to run away or go away. Um, I'm going to set this pretty high. I'm going to set it to like a thousand. Uh, I think that's good enough. Uh, and once that's all done, um, on the success of that, we just need to pull off and um, get our decide, what is it called? Um, if I renamed it wrong, oops. Decide next action, that's what we want. Decide next action, there we go. Uh, so what they'll do is when it first spawns into the map, it's gonna activate this, which is our random roam. So if you, don't want that to execute first you probably want to execute this and go down and it'll work out what it wants what you want it to do next um, and then for that we want to um, set our max walk speed to 150 so it's definitely going the correct speed that we want it to and it's just going to pick a random radius about a thousand clicks out from its current position to move to and it will only move to somewhere that is in that nav um, that nav mesh and then it'll pick that location and then what it'll do is once it's said and done it will come along here will it'll wait two to six seconds and it'll make a decision what it wants to do next whether that is a case of um, moving to the next location well in our case it will always just pick the next location to move to um, uh, or it will um, <clears throat> or it will um, do a different action if you have one so let's play. So our zombies are moving around. They are definitely moving way too fast for the animation. And they just bumped into one another. Um, let's see them though get to their next location. They're waiting. And then they move on again. So the animation is way too slow. Uh, or, the, or the max walk speed is way too fast. So I'm going to set it to 100. And I'm going to go into, don't forget to obviously go into the uh, walk idle. If it will let me open it, there we go. And then set this also to 100. Um, oh. Okay, so we can dismiss all that, that's fine. And we just add the walk back in. If I can set that to a hundred, 
Okay, that's fine. I don't need you to keep telling me that there's load errors. I know, I know. Uh, right, third person. Why are you not going away? It really didn't like that, did it? Maybe I should move it before I, <laughs> yeah, I do that. All right, let's have a look. They're still moving pretty fast, I think. Wow, that's weirdly... Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do something really crazy and just set it to something like, I don't know, maybe 50 will work, right? So let's drag this down first, way down. Wow, it's really not liking that, is it? Let's just set it back to 150 and see if it's because, ah, right, 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 right. That's why, okay, delete it out before, or move it before you do that. 50, set this also to 50. Uh, I mean, zombies are pretty slow, right? Um, it kind of makes sense. And let's set that to 50 as well. Cool. <clears throat> now we could also make them very beefed out, I suppose. So it doesn't really make much difference. That looks a lot better. I mean, I still think it's a bit too fast. Um, but yeah, that's, um, at least it's, um, at least they're moving. And of course, if, um, if by chance you don't like the fact that they've all got the same animation, what you can do is get rid of that, go to your zombie, uh, go to your individual child zombie. So let's do our military zombie, for example. Let's bring him over here. Oh, I hate it when it opens up in these half, um, half BPs. Click on the mesh and you should be able to just apply a new and BP depending on the zombie. So uh, you can make um, multiple children of the zombie master and then um, you can make multiples of the zombie master and bring them down in the children so they all have the same code and they all do the same thing but um, have it that they've got their own animations, right? So this is what I was saying about what the other subscriber asked me for. Uh, you can physically um, change things up still in those child BPs, even though they share the same code, right? So you can have different animations for different characters, so they all act slightly differently, but they all work in the same way. So again, sitting down in a chair, they can all use that code to sit down in a chair, but they might require a different animation for sitting down in that chair. But it's exactly the same code, right? So yeah, that's um, that's where we're at right now. So they are moving around. I might just tweak that to be a little bit less still. Uh, in the next episode though, what we will do is get these characters that when they see our protagonist, they go for the protagonist. They, they will sort of walk to them. Um, so <clears throat> that will go into our kind of decision um, tree so it has they you know will set up like a boolean for has seen player if they have seen the player they will move to the player um, if the player goes out of vision they will unset that has seen player and then they will kind of get to the last known location and then create a new decision okay so that's where we're at at the moment okay uh, hopefully this has been really easy really quick breakdown for you guys uh, if you have any questions please feel free to ask me uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Don't forget to like, leave me a comment with any suggestions, and, uh, and hit that subscribe button. It always helps. It's free to do. You can always change your mind. Take care. Bye.